Greetings everyone, it's your boy Perry Walker and welcome back to my channel where I help build strong marriages that last. Now, AI is all the rave today and I use AI in my day-to-day -day life when I'm doing my personal things, when I'm creating my videos. So I went on ChatGTP to ask a question and the question goes like this, what would happen if black people stopped getting married altogether? Now, it's no surprise that marriage in the black community has been on the low for a long time, various reasons. You have a lot of content creators coming on the internet <laughs> talking about the, the difficulties that people are having in marriage in general, particularly in the black community. We have a, a, a high number of single parent homes that are led by women, and it's just a mess right now. It's just a big, big mess. So this is what ChatGTP spit back at me. It said, if black people stop getting married, several potential social, economic, and cultural impacts could arise. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> While it's important to recognize that marriage is a personal choice, it is, the absence of marriage within a community could lead to various consequences. Now, th this was not a shock to me, and it's probably not going to be a shock to any of you guys, but, but it's something to think about because we are heading towards this, right? Number one, economic impact. Household stability. Marriage often provides economic stability as two incomes can combine to build wealth own property, and invest, right? Without marriage, single-parent households may struggle more financially, and they do, uh, which could widen the wealth gaps within community. Generational wealth, there ain't none, right? Marriage is a common path to building and transferring wealth across generations. Without it, the transfer of assets such as homes or businesses could be more complicated, potentially limiting the ability to accumulate generational wealth. This has been a problem in the black community for a long time. And even though I come from a blended family and, you know, my my mom was married to my stepdad, I, my biological dad and my mom weren't married. They still owned a home. So I grew up in a home. I grew up in the suburbs pretty much, right? So I could say that I was one of the fortunate ones, even though there were some issues in my family. And even though early in my marriage, my wife and I experienced a lot of financial difficulties, mainly caused by myself and my lack of confidence in myself and what I was going through mentally, I still managed, we still managed to put our family in a stable environment and our children pretty much grew up in the suburbs in their formative years. Now all of our children are grown. So we're one of the few that are able to provide a certain level of structure, but still, we are still behind other ethnic groups, especially those that come over. Now I know that a lot of people say that, well, the government helps out these other groups. The crisis we're having now, I'm not gonna mention it. YouTube may cut off my video if I do. Number two, family structure. The impact on children. Hmm. Research often shows that children benefit from the stability of a two-parent household. Although this is not to say that a single-parent household cannot thrive. Some of them do. I have a lot of awesome friends that came from single-parent homes, men or women, and they're thriving. And I have a lot that, unfortunately, uh, some of them aren't with me with me today. Some of my friends are no longer on this earth because of the path they've taken. However, a lack of marriage may lead to more single parent households, which may face more challenges in terms of resources and support, community support. Marriage can also play a role in community and social cohesion. Married couples often serve as models for younger generations, providing examples of long-term commitment, shared responsibility, and conflict resolution. Now, this is true, but unfortunately, and maybe it's me, I've been hitting a brick wall when trying to present this. 
Now, my wife and I have been married for 28 years. Now, as I mentioned in some of my other videos, we had our struggles. Now, every marriage has had their life struggles. Marriage is work. But what makes marriage work is learning how to mitigate through these problems and come to a healthy resolution so that divorce isn't an option, right? But the more I try to speak to the younger generation about this, it's like my voice is being overshadowed by a lot of the negative voices on social media and the negative experiences that a lot of men have experienced with divorce. Now, I'm not going to downplay these people's experiences because, man, <laughs> the stories I've heard are just crazy. Heck, I was married before my current wife, and I went through an ordeal where my first wife, she didn't want to be a faithful woman. She didn't. Um, and she cheated on me several times. And that could have really seared my mind against marriage, but it didn't, thank God, because I wouldn't have the wonderful wife I have now, the beautiful children I have now, and the three beautiful grandchildren that I have now. I just, I'm just finding it hard to convey the benefits of marriage to the younger generation, and I don't know if it's just my delivery or is it that the negative voices are outweighing the good voices because I'm going to be honest, y'all, it's not looking good for the black community. And I know this is AI, right? This is just a program that probably takes its cues from uh, collective information it gathers off of the internets, which a lot of this information I'm reading isn't a surprise to those who are aware. But think about what has been said here. Think about where we are going. Think about where we as a people are going to be 100 plus years from now. Or are we going to be a people? right? Cultural and religious considerations. Shift in traditions. In many black communities, marriage is tied to cultural and religious values. A decline in marriage can shift norms and expectations around family life and relationships, religious influence. Faith communities that place a strong emphasis on marriage may experience a shift in their influence or see changes in how they address family and relationship issues. I've heard it said by several content creators that the black church is destroying the black family. Now, before you, my Christian brethren, start throwing them Bibles at me and wanting to put holy water and lay hands and speak in tongues and cast out whatever you think is on me, hear me out. When you look around in any church, not even just the black church, I don't like using black church, but the reason why I'm using black church, white church, is just because of ethnicity and to for a comparison and contrast, okay? Uh, men are lacking. And, and honestly, this isn't anything new. Now, I did a deep dive a while back to try to understand this. And to my surprise, I found out that a lot of organizations that are around, like the YMCA, the Salvation Army, the Boy Scouts of America— all of these organizations were started for men to get men involved in religious things because the Christian man was looked upon as a weak, frail person. Look at some of the movies. Where you see a, a man of the cloth, right? He's usually skinny, weak, timid, not very masculine at all. So a lot of men across all ethnicities except for the black people, Black people have always had their roots in the church because of our struggle. But in other ethnicities, that was not so. Now, in the black church, this is becoming a problem. But all I know is that there's a great disparity between men and women in the church. And a lot of content creators have said that modern churches cater to women. Therefore, they're going to cater to their customer base and men are an afterthought. And I got to admit, when I look at some churches, not all, that is true. I, can, I can't argue with them about that. I cannot argue with them about that. Now, I happen to go to a church where marriage is promoted and celebrated. Accountability and the fire is held under the foot of not only men, but women as well. 
We have a lot more men involvement in the church. We have a lot of thriving married couples that have been married longer than my wife and myself. We have a lot of young married couples. We have a thriving singles ministry. And by the way, it's time of celebrations ministry in Houston's church led by Pastor J.T. Flowers for the morning service and the lead pastor in the second service, Jerry Flowers Jr. Anyway, I digress. Had to promote my church. But when there's a breakdown in the church, which I heard a lot of young black men particularly, and now a lot of black women are starting to to say this, that they don't believe in the in in the church, and a lot of them are starting to tap out of the church because of a whole lot of different issues going on. But relationship seems to be a driving force too. A lot of young ladies go to church and they go to a singles ministry and they see a whole bunch of young ladies. And if one man comes to the church that happens to be single, boy, he's like a fish in a piranha tank. <laughs> okay. And you have all these ladies fighting over this one guy if he's not part of the rainbow community. Number four, it says um, social perceptions and gender dynamics. Okay. In the absence of marriage, traditional gender roles and expectations may evolve or shift. Hmm. Some people may view this as liberating while others may see it as destabilizing relationship commitment, cultural, the cultural significance of marriage as a symbol of commitment may change, leading to more non-traditional family structures, such as cohabitation, long-term partnerships without formal marriage, shacking. Gender roles are flipped. You have same genders dating each other, which can kill a society, which can kill an ethnicity group because Two men can't produce a baby. Two women can't produce a baby. Hopefully I don't get counseled for saying that. And the cohabitation thing, the problem with that is when you start normalizing living together without any commitment, it would be easy to walk out of that relationship. Though some of the young people I have spoken to have said that, well, you know what? Before we got married and we were just living together, everything was fine. Now, I don't have any scientific data to try to understand why that is. I've even seen that. Heck, I've even seen some stars that have been cohabitating for decades, for 40 plus years, longer than I've been married, and they still have this perception of this awesome relationship. But I believe in marriage, okay? I believe that's a red heron from Satan, and that's my opinion according to the scriptures. Now, I'm getting to that after I get done with this. Mental and emotional health. Marriage often provides emotional and psychological support. Without it, individuals may need to rely more on extended family or social networks for support. Loneliness and isolation. Some individuals may experience more isolation or loneliness without the structure of marital relationship. Now, the other day I put out a video about a woman beautiful woman, 36 years old, and she's starting to rethink some of the decisions she made in her life. She said that love has eluded her, and now that she's approaching being 40, being 36, she's in over her mid-30s, she wants to be married and have children. She doesn't want to live it up with her girlfriends in an old folks' home swapping false teeth. (laughs) And My approach to address this was a lot different because most content creators that are men that uh, address that situation uh, attack it from a... You see, you see, you should have got married when you were young. And truthfully, she should have explored her options. And I do find it hard to believe that women that get that old could not find someone decent. Our society has become very transactional and relationships have been merchandised to where the content of a person's character is no longer a driving force in deciding whether or not people want to get together, particularly women want to be with the man. It's usually resources and finances. Some say it's always been like that, and maybe it has, but I know that according to the scriptures, there's a balance when it comes to resources and 
having a healthy family dynamic that's built upon love and respect, okay? And then Mr. AI Robot concluded everything with, while these potential outcomes focus on broad social trends, it's essential to remember that the individual experiences and choices around marriage can vary greatly, and many families thrive outside of traditional structures. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. When I look at the black community, man, we we are not thriving. Though my family may be thriving, there are thousands more that are not. And though I know there be some people to downplay it, I know according to what I saw this young lady pouring out her heart about her desire to be in a committed relationship, and even some men that are upset at the choosiness and pickiness of some women, people desire to be in committed relationships. People are tired of playing around. There are some people that will never get tired of playing around. But most people want someone that they can love, start a family with, and build something with. And the problem is really simple. We are selfish human beings. I know there's a lot of talking points to elaborate on that, but I think the Word of God really brings it home. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, Paul just lays it out. Don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, unbending, slanderers, impulsively wild, savage, cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloated windbags. Addicted to lust and allergic to God, they'll make a show of religion, but behind the scenes, they're animals. Stay clear of these people. Wow, they're animals. Now, I'm reading from the Message Bible. That's a lot of paraphrasing, but you get the point, right? And we do live in a dog-eat-dog world right now. We live in a very savage time right now. We live in a time where you have some young ladies that are telling young men, I refuse to go to a place like Chili's or on a coffee date because it's beneath them. That is completely ludicrous, right? You have some men that are using women for sport. Not all, but a lot. I know some, okay? You have people that have no respect for one another. And when you have that across a society, as some people say that, when America's in a recession, these are financial terms, the black people are definitely in the poorhouse. So if the world is like what Timothy is saying, the black community surely is experiencing it 10 times or 1,000 times over, and that's what I see. And it's sad to see it, guys. My heart really is to try to promote marriage From God's perspective, I know a lot of people have lost hope in that. But I'm telling you, if God can work in my marriage, and I was a trip, I was a trip. No, I didn't cheat on my wife. No, I didn't beat on my wife. My wife didn't cheat on me or beat on me. But I'm telling you, I was going through my depression, battling that PTSD, the burden I put on my wife. Man, most women would have been out of there, out of there. But If God did it for me and my wife, my Lord, he can do it for those out there. And look, marriage is a beautiful thing. Now, if you flip all of the bad things that ChatGTP said, those are some of the good things that could happen for you. All right? Think about it. Okay? The economic impact, generational wealth, family structure, strong families, right? The social dynamics, right? Men will be men, women will be women. There will be a, a community, a strong community, right? Mental and emotional. Man, people will be healthy in their minds. They're religious. There will be strong churches teaching the word of God. So just think about it. If we shift our mind 
and we turn our hearts back to Christ, all of those things that are pointed out bad are turned to good, and it'll strengthen us instead of weaken us. But anyhow, I'm going to get on out of here. If you found anything good in this, give me a thumbs up so that it can help me out to spread across the YouTube interwebs, nets, and stuff. And if you really dig what I'm saying, watch another one of my videos that's up there in the corner. And if you want to take it a step further, subscribe to my channel. Till the next time, I will see you on the next one. Peace.